Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Life and welcome back to another knife making tutorial. Now the knife we're going to build in this video isn't actually the knife you're seeing. My client had ordered a knife and he wanted a barbecue uh, kitchen type knife and he was quite specific that he wanted rock patterning on the blade as well as the handle and he wanted an acid etch on it. And I missed that communication. I, it was there, it was clear, it was totally my fault. And so this was a knife that I made. And when I sent him a picture, he's like, is that my knife? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, oh, okay, I thought it was gonna have, and anyways, long story short, I felt terrible. And I said, you know what, if you're buying a custom knife, you should get exactly what you want. So I remade the knife and when I made the second one, uh, I ran cameras, so we've got the footage of that build. Uh, but anyways, this was the very first iteration. I ended up selling this rather quickly on Instagram. I think it lasted about 10 minutes and it was sold. Uh, but really happy with the way this one turned out as well as the proper one uh, that we're gonna make in this video. I've always wanted to do one of these water bottle chops. I thought this was kind of cool. All right, so we had the template. Obviously, we're just gonna cut this out. And then like I do many of my knives, uh, the customs, the one-offs is I'll just glue my paper template to the steel. And the steel that we're gonna use for this knife is actually Nitro V. Nitro V is a derivative of ABL, uh, but it's got a little bit more uh, Vandium and then a little bit more something else. I'm not sure, I'm not a metallurgist, but it's very similar to AEBL steel and it's designed as a cutlery specific steel. Really, that's kind of the intent of this steel. It's a fairly new steel. Um, I think it's only been around a handful of years, if that. So anyways, there's our stock. I believe this is about 3 16ths of an inch. Uh, that first knife that I had made was 1 8th. It was a much thinner knife, uh, but this is going to be 3 16ths. And then I just cover that template that we had glued on with blue layout dye. Just that way in the profiling, sometimes you, you heat up your blade and the glue lets off. That way we've always got a backup. We've got the silhouette of the knife on there really easy to work with. And we'll just cut it out on the portable bandsaw. And one question I get asked a lot is what type of blades do I use in my bandsaw? And I use Milwaukee brand and 14 TPI, 14 teeth per inch. It might be better to have different blades for different materials, different material thicknesses. But for me, 14 does a really great job at everything. And I really don't like the idea of having to switch out blades for different materials or different thicknesses. So 14 TPI, that's all I use and super happy with those blades. And once we've got that cut out with the portable bandsaw, we'll clean that up a little bit. Start on the cleaning up the profile of the blade with the flat platen and my work rest. And once I get that part done, what I'll do is I'll take off my, my work rest and still in the flat platen, I kind of like to just gently massage some of those radiuses, those larger radiuses, you know, the belly there. And I find just kind of rocking it back and forth in the flat platen like this does a really, really nice job at just really smoothing it out. And then also I'll do this in the spine. Sometimes anywhere you've got like a gentle radius, you can really control and get really nice smooth transition. So it's a very, very clean, organic sweeping line, if you know what I mean. And then we'll jump on the horizontal belt grinder. This is my homemade horizontal belt grinder. And we'll clean up some of those tighter inside radiuses and get everything nice and comfy. Make sure it feels good in the hand. And then just to get a slightly better surface finish, uh, I like to do this part on the 10 inch contact wheel. I'll kind of go over everything that we had done with the flat platen at a, at a coarser grit. We'll go with a finer grit and I use really, really quick motions when I'm doing this. I don't want to be putting any radiuses in there with that contact wheel, uh, but I like to be able to just kind of skate over it really quickly. And I don't know, when, when I look at the video footage of me doing this, I kind of wonder why I do it like this, but it's just the way I like it. And I don't know, everybody likes to do things a little bit differently. Now we're going to get ready to scribe out our center line. So this is where we're going to grind our edge to. And on this knife, I'm actually going to bring it to about 30 thou before heat treat, and then we'll finish grinding after heat treat. So there's our grind lines marked out. And then obviously before heat treat, we need to get our holes drilled. Now we're gonna be using mechanical fasteners. We're gonna be bolting the scales onto this knife. So I'm just kinda lining out where I want those mechanical fasteners to be. And we'll hit it with our automatic center punch, then go over it again with a bigger center punch. And uh, what I'd like to do as well is I'm gonna lighten up the handle a little bit by drilling some extra holes. Uh, just because it's such a heavy blade and there's no reason to have it quite so heavy. 
Obviously we don't need the epoxy to be flowing through to both sets of scales. Uh, so all those extra holes, they're not for that reason. They're just to lighten it up a little bit. I'm not sure how much it really does, but I just thought whatever. And then these holes here that we're drilling out, we're going to be putting quarter inch standoffs in there. Uh, so that's why we drilled those ones out to quarter inch. Then we'll hit everything with a countersink real quick just to make sure we don't have anything in the way. Next step, we're going to put some blue layout die on the blade so we can mark how high we want our bevels to be. Now, since this knife is going to get a rock patterning up near the spine uh, and on the flats, kind of near the spine, uh, I didn't want to bring the bevels all the way up because I wanted to be able to have some material to, to get into that rock patterning with and not thin out the top too much. So I went with about one inch. I thought one inch bevels should be good and it ended up working fairly well. Now I'm just using my Bill Banky file guide. I've got a tool time Tuesday on this. Check it out if you're interested. Absolutely an amazing tool. I love this thing. And now the fun part, we get to grind in the bevels. Uh, since we're gonna be doing a convex grind, we're gonna put in most of the grind as a flat grind. And actually I'm not gonna start the convex grinding until after a heat treat has been done, because I still wanna be able to grind a little bit more of the flats after heat treat, and then just very lightly, very gently, uh, put in our convex grind using our rotary platen. This was an awful lot of grinding, and uh, all freehand grinding for this knife. Uh, I absolutely love the grinding process. I don't know why. I know a lot of guys get frustrated by it, but my favorite part about knife making is grinding bevels. It's weird. We're not getting too carried away because we are going to be cleaning things up a little bit after heat treat, but I just want to get the most of the material out of the way so that once we've got the blade hardened, uh, we won't have to be grinding. It is significantly more work to grind a blade that's been heat treated. And especially once we're doing our, our cryogenic treatments on it, we got that super duper incredible wear resistance. It is very, very noticeable when you're grinding and sanding. I mean, it's nice to be able to do that with a knife and have such a great tough surface of the knife, except for when you're sanding and grinding and, and finishing it up. So for that reason, I'm doing as much uh, grinding preheat treat as I can. I would probably say all in it took me about half an hour to grind both of these bevels. I was going fairly slow though. Now that we're at that point, we are going to heat treat. And as you see on the screen there, we've got our blade in a stainless steel pouch that is a tool wrap. That's to help prevent decarburization. I've got a video coming out on heat treating stainless steels where we're going to get into that in a little bit more depth. But essentially when you're doing these stainless steels up to 2000 degrees in that ballpark, uh, you do not want the knife to be all on its lonely exposed to oxygen in your kiln. It really, really sucks a lot of performance out of the steel. So we create a inert airtight environment with that stainless steel wrap. And then we're using a plate quench to rapidly cool our steel. Two aluminum plates. I've got a video actually on how I built that. You can check that out. And it works really, really good. I would say it's about 30 seconds to a minute and the steel, the knife is actually cool to the touch. I'm absolutely, I'm always shocked at how fast those aluminum plates uh, suck the heat out of the knife. Now that we've got this done, before I'm gonna do any tempering, I'm going to give it a deep cryogenic treatment. Putting it here into my duar full of liquid nitrogen and I'm actually gonna let it sit there overnight. This is kind of the fun sciencey bit uh, that I'm really enjoying lately in knife making. And uh, again, in the video where we're heat treating stainless steels, we'll go into a little bit more information about why you would do this and the benefits of doing it. Uh, but anyways, I'm just showing here that we did do it to this knife. It is so much fun working with this stuff. Frosty. All right, we've let it come up to a room temperature. That uh, took a couple, I usually leave it like three hours or something. You, you wanna make sure it's warmed up and then we can go ahead and do our two temper cycles. Now I ended up developing quite a warp while I was tempering and uh, end up having to go back and use my little blade breaker tool that I made here and very, very carefully pull that warp out. Also, thanks so much to you guys for your suggestions. I ended up doing this right out of the temper cycle. So the blade was at 400 degrees and it definitely made a difference. I got that warp right out of there and I didn't break the knife. Bonus. Now I'm just getting our scales prepped. I've got a gray G10 liner and we're gonna use a black G10 for the main scale portion. Again, this is gonna get rock pattern. So there'll be kind of uh, the, 
the visual interestingness is going to be from the texture. Uh, so these fairly plain subdued colors, they'll be just fine. And we'll get a bunch of our spring clamps on here and let this stuff dry for a couple of hours. And then once it's dried, we'll go ahead and kind of grind it into a nice square piece of stock that we can uh, then go and take measurements off of and work on the rest of our layout. So I'll use these cant twist clamps to hold the pieces together. Make sure you get them oriented correctly because uh, I want the liners on the inside. So you just have to think about that when you're laying it out. And then for the mechanical fasteners, I don't want this quarter inch hole going all the way through. So all I'm doing here is just using the tip of it to mark where the center is going to be. What we'll do is we'll take that after we've got all three holes marked, we'll drill the through hole all the way through the scales. That will be just slightly larger than the diameter of the 832 screws that we're doing. And that's this bit right here. So this one, we will drill all those holes, all those three holes, all the way through. Now we'll take kind of a look at the fasteners that we're going to use. So these are aluminum standoffs. Uh, it's a quarter inch outside diameter. Uh, they're a quarter inch long and they're tapped inside as an 832. You can get different uh, thread sizes and stuff. Uh, but that's basically how they work. They kind of sit into the tang there and you put your bolt in through there. So what we do need to do is create a shoulder, like a little recess on the inside of the G10. That's what I'm doing here. I've got a stop set up on my drill press so I can't drill all the way through. And I did wreck three sets of scales accidentally drilling all the way through. So that's a part that you need to be very, very careful about. And then this here is the outside of the scales and we're going to countersink this because obviously we're using countersunk screws and we would like those to sit nice and flush, probably about a 16th of an inch uh, below the outer surface of the G10. So I'm just taking the first one here. I keep fitting it up with a screw and now I'm just setting the depth that I need to go so I can countersink the other holes the exact same depth. And with those holes countersunk, now we can just do a test fit. This gives you a good idea of how those mechanical fasteners work as well. Essentially that standoff just fits in there. We've basically created threads between the scales and we can bolt them together using those threads. They're really, really slick. I like using them and I'm gonna start using them a lot more than I have in the past. And now what I want to do is just to figure out how far up the blade I want the handle to go and the angle I want it to stop at. I want to try and match that angled plunge line that we have. So I'll mark that out onto the knife and then transfer that to the G10. I only transfer it to one side uh, because I can cut that side. And once that one's all set up and I like it, we can just bolt these scales together without the blade in between. And we can just grind the other one to match that. You'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Also, I like to trace out the handle just so I can keep proper orientation as I'm working on this knife. Then we'll cut off most of the excess material. Again, we're leaving enough there that we can actually grind it down to the, the tang of the knife, but we're just getting the most of it off so that uh, we don't spend too much time at a grinder. Now I've bolted everything together off camera, and now we can bring all the final profiling of the handle to meet the knife itself. This is the fun part. This is where it kind of really starts to take shape. And then once we're done on this grinder, we'll jump again to the horizontal grinder and clean up some of those smaller inside radiuses. And this is where I want to, I want this step kind of finished here. I'm not going over it again, so I need to make sure everything is really nice and smooth. We don't have any bumps or ripples. And so essentially this is going to be like a finished surface, except for when we add our rock patterning on top of it. 
Now that we've got that done, we've taken the blade out and you can see how we bolted the two scales together. Now the scale on the bottom is longer than the one on the top. The one on the top was the one that I had brought to my final dimension. And so that's how I kind of get those two to match up exactly. And then once we've ground them, we'll go ahead and put them in the vise and give them a hand sand just to get rid of that, those directional scratches from the grinding belts. And basically we want this to be as a finished surface now because it's hard to access this once it's on the knife. But obviously with these being removable, we could always uh, adjust it or tweak it or polish it later on if we wanted to, simply by removing the scales from the blade. And that's one of the things I love about those removable scales. But anyways, now that we've got those kind of dealt with for now, we're going to do the finished grinds on our bevels. So again, we're going to continue with our flat grind. And I think I went to about 20 thousandths of an inch uh, as a flat before I switched over to the rotary platen. Now, a lot of people keep asking, uh, do you still like the rotary platen? And I've only had it for about four months, uh, but I absolutely love it. Uh, it's a very, very forgiving grind, and I find as long as my, my grind lines are really close uh, with a flat grind, I can jump onto this here rotary platen, and uh, it's just beautiful. I just absolutely love this machine. So now I'm going over it with a super fine belt, and we're just really refining those scratches before we jump to the dreaded hand sand. But we'll go ahead and hand sand this thing up, get all those transitions or plunge lines cleaned up nicely, and uh, pretty much get ready to do the rock patterning. What I'm going to do quickly though is mark out where the handle is going to go to because I do not want to have any rock patterning uh, underneath the scale. So it'd create a gap there. I mean, food would get in there and it'd just be unsightly. So I just wanted to make sure I knew where that territory was so we could avoid it. And then this was actually very, very nerve wracking because I've put a lot of work into this knife at this point. You know, we've got nice bevels on there. Everything's hardened, it's heat treated. And one little tiny slip. You know, if you sneezed when you're doing this, oh my goodness, I think it would be a sneeze followed by a good old cry session. Oh, that'd be heartbreaking. Luckily, it all worked out. I didn't wreck anything. And then we can jump onto the scales. Now I'm doing the initial uh, rock patterning of the scales off of the knife and once I get those finished up then I'll bolt everything together and we have to continue those lines around the spine uh, of the knife or on the tang of the knife so I basically get the the rough rock patterning set up and then once that's done I can continue with it uh, when it's all assembled. Before I do that though I do protect it with some masking tape just to make sure if there was a you know you accidentally touched it with the belt. I, I would hate to ruin something at this point of the game. So we'll get it assembled and then we'll uh, tape it all up. And now we will continue. So essentially what I'll do is I'll pick one of the grooves that I had left off with and kind of roll that around the tang of the knife, thus kind of continuing that rock patterning. And then also I switched to a smaller wheel here as well and that kind of really helped things out a little bit. Um, I found with a bigger wheel I wasn't getting the results I wanted so I used the several different wheels to give it a bit more of a random rock pattern. And then uh, we're getting pretty much the nitty gritty. So I'm going to etch my maker's mark. And this isn't just uh, marking on the surface. We're actually eating away. We're creating a permanent indentation of my logo on there. And I want to do this before acid etching so that uh, the acid will be completely over everything. And uh, this one nice thing with the removal handle scales that I can get an acid etch and even the entire tang between the scales will be nice and dark. Hard to do that when you're gluing your scales on. Unless of course you put the entire knife scales and all in the acid. Uh, I've tried that a few times and some materials will get greatly discolored by the acid, so use caution. Worked out pretty good. And then uh, what I'm doing here is before I bolt everything together is I'm just going to take some black compound on my buffing wheel and just clean up those scales. I find this works really, really good at smoothing out that uh, those grooves that we've ground. It allows me to use a really coarse belt on the grinder so I can grind quickly. And then I just go over it with some fairly decent pressure and it just smooths everything out. So I really like doing that. And uh, this is basically cleaning it up. When I'm done this point off camera, I actually take it into the house and I use dish soap and I wipe these down really good, let them dry before I assemble the knife. But this is our final assembly. It all went together really well. Really happy with the way this knife turned out. 
and uh, I actually delivered this knife about two hours after I'd finished it. This is one of the few knives that I actually sell locally, and it was one of the greatest experiences uh, to actually be able to deliver a knife in person. That's something I rarely get to do, and oh my goodness, I, I thoroughly enjoyed meeting the person that had ordered it, the gentleman, and uh, the look on his face, he was so happy with it. I felt so great giving it to him, and so I was really, really pleased with, uh, with that process. It was a lot of fun. And then this one I did sharpen up on the paper wheels. Super, super quick, efficient way to get an excellent edge on there. And uh, it turned out really nice. It's a really great slicing blade. Whack. Yep. I think it's going to be a good slicing knife. I sure hope he enjoys it. I look forward to, uh, to seeing it, I guess, in the future. And, and, and I told him if you'd like me to sharpen it, I'm more than willing to do that. And I was in such a rush to get this out to him. Uh, this is really all I could muster up for some type of a beauty shot. So hopefully it works for you guys. Also, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully maybe you learned something. If not, you just were entertained. If you did like it, do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And as always, guys, I thank you so much for watching. Cheers. <music>